Right, in this video <clears throat> we are going to look at how to work out the Young's modulus for <clears throat> a piece of wire. I'm sure there's a theory video on this that you ought to look at before. However, in order to work out the Young's modulus, what we really need to work out is the stress of the material divided by the strain, which gives us this Young's modulus. So how do we work out stress and how do we work out strain? Well, stress is given by the force divided by the cross-sectional area, and strain is equal to the original, it's the extension divided by original length. So how are we going to do that? Well, there is a method called using Searle's apparatus, but in this one I'm going to show you um, what I think might be a slightly easier way of doing it. We're going to have this piece of wire suspended along a bench. I'm going to clamp it shut with a G clamp here to hold it. And the reason why I use this and not just a knot is because the knot tightens and in tightening it will start to extend. So I'm going to pinch it between these two. So with that securely fastened there, I'm then going to place some weights on the other end. Of course, <clears throat> I'm going to need a reference point, and I'm going to look for the extension that happens compared to the original length <clears throat> with known weights on it. So in order for that to happen, I mean, we've got quite a lot of um, things we need to uh, work out. First of all, the area bit. I need to work out the diameter of my material. And how do I do that? I want to do three positions in order to work that out, because uh, you might have a difference in, in the thickness of the wire. I'm going to show you the wire that I'm going to be using. I don't know whether you can see that. It's just fine wire. And in order to work out the thickness, I'm going to use a micrometer. I'm going to place it in and tighten up the micrometer until the ratchet indicates that it's tight enough. And then I'm going to read off the value. Of course, I need to make sure, first of all, that I have no zero error. Let me show you how this works. We need to, first of all, tighten this down without anything in there and see if there's a zero error. It's, let me hold it a little bit closer. There's, um, there's very little zero error in there. We could almost say there is none. So that's what I'm going to assume. There's no zero error in there. And then, of course, as I roll it out, each one little marker across the top is a millimeter. So there is a millimeter. So as I roll it out through the first 50, there's a half millimeter and there is a full millimeter. So let's place that in. So I know I'm less than a millimeter. Let's roll that back in. I know that I'm less than half a millimeter. So, and actually I'm 0.29 of a millimeter. Good, okay. So that's how we do that. We do it in three different positions because it's important to work out the diameter. Then we take the original length, and I want this as long <clears throat> as possible, because I know that this extension is going to be very small. If I make this as long as possible, this will be bigger, given for the same um, stress applied. So therefore, we need to make it as long as possible. And I'm going to stretch this out over about, <clears throat> if you can help it, three to four meters. However, it can be done much smaller, but the bigger the length, the more the extension, the easier it is to, is to read. So you'll need to find the length. And then we've got to measure the force and work out the stress from it, measure the extension and work out the strain from it. So we're going to have force in our table in Newton. This is what we're changing. The extension is what we're measuring. Let's put that in millimeters because we know it's going to be incredibly small. We will therefore work out the strain, which has no units, and the stress, 
which is going to be in times 10 to the something, probably 9 pascals, because it's going to be require a big force on it. I'm not going to repeat this because I know that it's going to um, affect the wire. I can't use the same bit of wire, so I've got to use another bit of wire. So I'm just going to do it once. If I wanted it again, so, so be it, I'll have to take all these readings again. So with that in mind, I'm just going to show you the setup. The setup is a different camera angle because it's occurring over such a large position. So I'm just going to switch camera angle. So here is my setup. At the very far end of the bench, you'll be able to see a red, something red. That's where the wire is held, and that must be about five odd meters away. As we come closer, you will see that I've got my micrometer and something suspended there in the center of shot. And then as I come even further away, you will see that I have the roller and the weight suspended on the end. And I'll increase the weight on there to see what happens with the extension. Let's take a look at this object here and how we're going to measure the extension better. So I'll just zoom that in. So this is a micrometer here, which we've looked at before. And with the micrometer, we're going to measure the extension extension that's occurring when weights are added. You'll probably see there's a nice little white marker as well lined up precisely now with the with the edge of the micrometer and we have also a reading on this. As I add some weight, I'm going to be fairly generous because we're going to keep adding about 200 grams at a time. Here comes 100 grams and another 100 grams. I'll stop that moving. You'll start to see the extension that's, that's gone on. So what I'm going to do is I am going to now rotate this very gently until we have an alignment again. And then I'll take a new reading. Then I'll apply another couple of 100 gram masses. Oops, just nudge that slightly, be careful about that. And then we'll notice that's held, more extension has happened. So therefore, once again, we work this out until we hit the right extension again and take another reading. And we repeat that process over and over. Eventually, we're going to be left with a nice set of results. And I will show you those results now. We have a large set of results here. Because, of course, we have um, a large number of weights in which to see what's taking place. So results are there, which we've seen just creeping into shot there. And coming back to the theory, what are we going to do with this? Well, ultimately what we will need to plot is we will want to work out the stress and the strain. If we plot the strain against the stress, of course, the stress is something which was our independent variable because the force was our independent variable and the strain along here. So what we should be seeing is we should be seeing a nice linear region and then that linear region will suddenly start to give just like a, if I draw on this side, Hooke's law force X. We start to get that for Hooke's law. Similarly, for stress strain, we'll start to see a linear bit and then it starts to head off, implying that you'll suddenly get a rapid strain for little stress. And if you take a look at the link below, you will see all the results. So this is a tricky experiment, but once it's put together, you can get some nice results and you can see if you can get that type of behavior coming out. Okay, hope that makes sense.